All right, draft season is over for the Knicks, who didn't make any picks in the 2023 NBA draft. And now we're going to turn our attention to NBA free agency. Now, look, there's a lot of debate among the Knicks fan base as to what the team should do this offseason. So let's talk about it with one of the co-hosts from Knicks Fan TV. That will be Alex Fratoris. And Alex joins me now. Alex, how you doing, man? Good, Dexter. Always glad to be back on here to talk Knicks basketball with you. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Look, I'm back. I just had a vacation recently, a really good one. So, good. And I came back in time for free agency. That's all that matters. It's going to be a busy time. So, let's get right into it. Now, Alex, on Thursday, yourself, fans, they were actually waiting to see if the Knicks did anything, if they would acquire a draft pick in the drafts. They did not. In your eyes, was it a disappointment that the Knickerbockers didn't make a pick this year? You know, I want to see them draft someone like uh, Keegan Murray's brother, Chris Murray, to get some 3 and D depth along the perimeter just because we saw we need more versatility the way after we lost to Miami in the playoffs. So I was a little disappointed to that regard where we couldn't get back into the first round. But when you start looking at the salary cap of what the Knicks have going to next season, it's understandable because as of right now, even though they have a mix of like – players who are still under contract, team options, player options. Uh, when you start looking at the money and that they're going to be over the salary cap this upcoming season, it makes sense that they didn't go out and go draft somebody because you still have to think about how do you go move somebody like Evan Fournier? Do you want to bring someone back like Derrick Rose? You know, you're going to have Emmanuel quickly, even though he's on the book for his rookie contract this upcoming season, do you want to extend him and have more money on the books for the following, for the future? So the Knicks not making a, a move this this draft is upsetting just because you hear about the talent depth that was in this year's uh, class, but at the same time, it's understandable based, uh, based upon how many people are on the books for the upcoming season. Yeah, you can understand them wanting to keep their flexibility for next season and beyond, so it is understandable indeed. Now, here's where we get things get interesting for the offseason. The mm. approach for the Knicks this offseason, I think it's pretty interesting because – there is some debate as to how the Knicks should play things. Do you think that they should go all-star hunting and must acquire an all-star this summer, or should they be patient and continue with the current development process? What do you say? I think it's somewhere in the middle, Dexter, because when you think about where the Knicks are right now and you just watch all the player movement around the league, especially within the Eastern Conference, it looks like it's becoming a little bit more wide open. I mean, of course, we still have to see if Dame Lillard decides to go from Portland to Miami, which could also change the dynamic of the Eastern Conference. But look, I look at Boston and moving Marcus Smart. I think that team takes a step back because they lost their heart and soul. Even though they got Christoph Porzingis, who's a good shooter, I think you start seeing like, okay, there's a lot of changes. The Wizards aren't going to be that great next season. So for the Knicks, I think it's somewhere in the middle where it's like, if you see the right opportunity, I think you should go in and go get somebody. Like we heard the rumors about Paul George. Now, of course, the Clippers are going to say, "Hey, we're we're just testing the waters here. There's not uh, uh, there's not any confirmation that that would actually happen." But if you tell me that you're gonna get someone like Paul George two years, and, and then you can have him as a rental with the team and the trajectory that they're on this season, this upcoming season, what they did after this past season, yeah, I think you can make a move like that. You know, another name out there is Zach Levine. Of course, uh, we had news from Stephen Bondi of the New York Daily News who said, hey, uh, CAA clutch, there's a little rift there. Doesn't seem like that deal would probably get done uh, or not like a high likelihood. There's still a, a chance, but still someone like Zach Levine I can understand the appeal to that someone who's good on offense uh can catch and shoot pull up from off the dribble add some of that depth because as we saw for the Knicks they need that added shooting I mean they were one of the teams that shot below 30 percent this this postseason and you're not going to be able to win playoff games like that so I think the Knicks they can be aggressive but be patient at the same time don't overspend just because you think you have to make a move especially with the new cap that's going to be in, in effect this upcoming season and the next two seasons where it's really going to be strict on how much money you have on your books but at the same time they can be patient and say hey we can we can kind of run it back but make some changes along the margins as well while still saying hey could we get somebody an upgrade in yeah. talent yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the game plan is for the Knicks this summer, right? Especially as we head to free agency. Now, talking about free agency, that starts on Friday at 6 p.m., one of my favorite days of the year as an NBA fan. So, Alex, I got to ask you this. If you had to make one free agent signing this offseason and you're the Knicks, who is the free agent that you think the Knicks need, absolutely need to bring to New York? Dexter, that's such a tough question. It's a great <laughs> question, but it's a tough question because – we know the Knicks need shooting. 
and there's some players that we've heard uh through sny we know the knicks have some interest in uh dante di vincenzo shout out to ian begley and we know that He's a good shooter. He shot 39% this season for the Warriors. He's a hustle guy. He can play some solid defense, give you some good offense, playmaking. But someone like him, you're like, okay, 6'4 guard. We already have enough guard depth right now. We really need someone on the wing, you know, 6'6 six, six or taller. Uh, because if you think about it, you got Quickly, Grimes, Josh Hart. You got Jalen Brunson. Those are four guards right there. And I don't know where Dante DiVincenzo is going to fit in that type of rotation. You know, even someone like Seth Curry, who I'm interested in, uh, still question, like, how do you fit that all in? Obviously, it depends on if the Knicks are going to move off of somebody like quickly because he is extension eligible this upcoming offseason. But it's still kind of tricky. Someone I'm looking at, though, someone like a Max Struess, who, who is who is that wing guy who can still shoot. We saw how well he performed in the playoffs for the Miami Heat. Another guy that I'm looking at is Josh Richardson, um, another 3 and D type player. Uh, there's also Jalen McDaniels. We know there's Obi's hopping stuff in the, in the news. Once again, going back to uh, Ian Begley, he said, hey, uh, the Knicks are going to see if they can get him more playing time. That's the request. Can they get him more playing time? If not, they'll try to see if they can find a suitor and a trade to go help him get more playing time. So maybe if you're thinking that a topic could be moved, someone like a Jalen McDaniels could come in and play that four position, be more of a defensive presence. Maybe that's something what Tom Thibodeau is looking for. I'm also looking at KJ Martin, a nice guy who can play small forward, who's a good slasher, give you some athleticism, because I think this team needs more athleticism. So I have all those guys. I know I listed a lot of people. I'm looking probably along the lines of KJ Martin, Jalen McDaniels, Max Drews, Josh Richardson, Richardson, just because there's still uncertainty at that guard position. Those are the four guys, but I'm probably leading KJ Martin just for some youth athleticism upside. Okay, some youth athleticism upside with some shooting a 3 and D wing. That is a need for the Knicks that they definitely could use. We'll see how it all plays out. It is going to be a very busy free agent offseason. At least Knicks fans hope so. We'll just see how it all plays out. That is Alex Fratoris, co-host for Knicks Fan TV. Alex, always good to talk some Knicks hoops with you. We'll talk again very soon, I'm sure. Dexter, always a pleasure coming on and talking with you, man. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, my man. You too.